In today's pattern, let's do the modern log cabin crochet blanket. This is a really cool blanket and you can do this for virtually any sizes that you wish. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as yarnspatience.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the modern log cabin crochet blanket just like you see here. This is actually growing on components of each other and if you look at it from the top point of view which I'll show in just a moment, you will notice that there's different colors in different areas of this particular crochet blanket. So without further ado, let me flip you to another page where we can look straight down on this particular blanket. On page two is a diagram of what we're seeing when it's lying down on a bed. So you can see that there's almost a square just like you see here in this color and then you can see that there's other colors here and together it makes up an entire afghan. Do you want to see something even cooler? Well last night I worked on a sample and let's show you what it looks like here. So this is a miniature example of what we see. This is for Barbie I think and what I wanted to do is learn how to join everything as you go. So you start off with one and then you move to another. So let me just uh, point out where it is on here. So you see the arrows here and you're, you're, you may get confused like I did. So I want to just indicate to, to you here. So what's going to happen is that we're going to do this one here and then I said this is the starting chain. So when we started the chain uh, we worked up in the project and it's working up in this direction. So in the instruction number two, the first rectangle here, I put the number two here because that's the next step for me and then you turn it over and you get the starting chain and then you do this section here. Then once you have that done, you work on this section. So do you see that you're working all the way across on a, on, a, on a row at this point? So even though you're on the side you're still doing it and then once you get that done you come down here and then you do this one and then the final is then this right here. So you have one, two, three, four and five. So the biggest tip that you can take from me today in today's tutorial, this is your takeaway. So what's gonna happen in here, you have to pay attention to what is your right side on here. The instructions always refer to the start on the right side, do this on the right side. So no matter what lines you finish on, you always have to look for the right side. So what I'm gonna have you do is that when we go to start this concept, I'm gonna have you label what is the right side with the stitch marker and you're gonna leave that on your project. So you always know where it is because once you start flipping these around, you can't really tell because it looks identical on the other side and the reason for the difference is that there's two rows. There's rows uh, two and three that keep repeating each other and the problem is is if you finish off on the wrong row when you go to attach the next one here it will not be in balance and therefore it'll start throwing things way off on you. So you have to pay attention to what is your right side especially on this particular project. And finally, you saw that I could do a small example. You can do any kind of example that you want to. So what you have to do is you have to pay attention to when you do your first one here that you keep an even number in the chain. So you could be like 98, you could do 100, 102, as long as that's a, it's an even number because you have to have the odd number when you're going to work and I'll explain that as we get there. So you can start at any point, you can finish at any point and start making your own kind of log cabin that's not specifically to this pattern but you can just kind of build on top of each other and make it quite interesting at the same time. So this is a really cool concept and without further ado let me show you how to do this. This is a really easy and fun project. So let's begin. You're going to need Karen one pound yarn as it states in the pattern and I want you to kind of follow that pattern because it gives you the indications on how to turn the pattern and what to look for when you're going to work on this. So what I want you to do is grab your Karen one pound and a six millimeter size J crochet hook today in order to play. Let's create a slip knot to begin. So the pattern tells you to chain 98 if you're doing exactly as the pattern but if you want to improvise maybe do a baby size or whatever just keep it in an even number and it will work out for you. So I'm gonna do that here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 and 22. So I'm just gonna go 22. It's an even number and that'll work out for me. So if you're gonna follow as exactly in the pattern just uh, follow the chain count on the pattern and meet me back here in just a moment. So we're gonna establish our first row here and the first row is the only time that you're ever gonna do anything like this and then rows two and three will repeat for the remainder of this entire afghan really as you go along. So with this one here you have to go second chain from the hook. So just count back so there's one and two. Now usually what I have you do in the patterns is that I have you turn it over and get to one strand in the, the chain. Do not do that with this pattern because you'll end up with a really huge hole that is going to happen. So when you go to the chain make sure that you go in and that there's two strands on top and one on the bottom. It'll make a huge difference and I want you to single crochet into that. 
So then chain one, skip one chain, okay, and go to the uh, next one over. So the second one over and again when you go in, make sure you get always two strands on top and then single crochet. Okay, so skip one, uh, so chain one, skip one and go to the second chain making sure two strands are staying on top and single crochet. Please do that for the entire duration of your chain. As you come across your chain, if you kept the right count of just starting it with an even number, you will end up with skip one and the final chain. So make sure you chain one first to do that and then skip one and then single crochet into the final chain. Okay, so that's how we started off with an odd number so that you could work it out. So let's uh, begin uh, row number two which will happen every other row and then we'll do row number three. So let's turn our work and do row number two. You'll have to do this every other row going forward for the remainder of your project. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna chain one. Now here's the thing is that you can see that you have a gap space. So you have a single crochet gap, single crochet gap and this is the chain one space that you have here. So we have to maintain those as we go along. So in this row whenever you're on row number two you're obviously right next to the edge. You're gonna have to fill that in with a single crochet. So let's, let's just uh, do it and I'll explain later. So we're gonna go into the first one and you're gonna single crochet and because the gap is the next space here, we, we want to make sure that we are gonna fill that in with a single crochet. Then the remaining of this as we go across is that you're gonna chain one, skip one which is a single crochet and go right into the chain one space for another single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across. So chain one, skip the uh, single crochet, go to the chain one space and single crochet and you're gonna do that all the way across. Do you see that? So what happens in the very beginning is that you have to watch for those chain one spaces when they're right next to each other right on the edge because that dictates how you start your, your, uh, your row. So you're just gonna do that all the way across until you run out and you have to, on row number two, you have to watch the final um, single crochets that go in. So in the final here, we skip one here. See there's a gap and then there's the outside one here. So we go into the gap, so with a single crochet and then the final stitch is just a single crochet. So in row number two, we don't immediately start like row number three with creating those gapping spaces because this is row number two. Let's turn and work and do row number three and I will review this again. So row number three starts off differently. So we're gonna chain up one and single crochet into the first one. You're always gonna do that. So you'll see that there's a single crochet in the next one and then there's the gap. So this one on row number three, we simply just chain one and jump to the next chain one space. So we skip over that single crochet and then we just do the same thing. So chain one, go to the next chain one space, chain one. So you're skipping over those single crochets all the way across. So you'll notice that on whenever you're doing rows number three is that you are going to uh, notice that you're gonna start this concept right away where row number two you just have to worry about that extra single crochet right in the very beginning. So before you continue on for the remaining of your project I want you to get a stitch marker out and I want you to label what is the right side and the wrong side of this. So as we come across you see that there's two single crochets in a row so we skip the next one and just immediately go right into the end. So lay down this project right now, okay, so don't turn it and I want you to grab a spare piece of yarn and I want you to label what is your right side and what is your wrong side and I'll show you how to do that. So as you just finish this, this is row number three. So what I want you to do is grab a spare piece of yarn or a stitch marker and I want you just to go in and just come on here so that it doesn't go to the other side and I want you just to loop this yarn through. Just, it, it'll come out later and then just pull through. So anytime that you look at your project and you can see that this is in the, on the top here, this means that you're looking at the right side. So if you turn it over, you don't see it. So that means it's the wrong side. So that's how you would do that. So let's review rows number two and three one more time to make sure that you got it and then we'll keep moving on in today's project. So let's turn our work now and go for row number two again. So it's a repeating of two and three. So in row number two, do you see that the gap space is right after the first one here? So we chain up one and single crochet into the first one as always but the gap space is next. So in row number two we fill it in with a single crochet and then we start the regular concept. So chain one, skip the single crochet and go to the next gap and we do that all the way across. So this is repeating of row number two. So you're gonna notice that when you're working on these instructions, so the first beginning square is gonna tell you that you need to end on 
the right side of the project. So whenever you're going to finish uh, uh, this particular square, the first one, we have to make sure that we're looking at the right side when we go to finish. So the only way to know that is if you have it list, uh, labeled or whether you're that gifted to remember that. So then right in the uh, outside, so you did a single crochet right in that final space, the last stitch is a single crochet. So turning our work going for row number three, again now I'm looking at the right side again, I can tell that through the stitch marker and I chain up one. Okay, the next one is has a single crochet in it, so I just chain one and go immediately to the next chain one space. This is called the granite stitch, it's also called the moss stitch if you wanna pay attention to that. So what I want you to do is continue along with this particular square or any kind of size that you're working on and I'm going to come back and when you're finished this square, you have to be finished so that you're looking at the right side of the project. Okay, so if I'm doing it right at this moment is that when I finish this line, I've just finished doing the right side of the project. So here's the edge, you got two single crochets in a row, just jump over the first one, go right into the uh, last. So when it says finish on the right side, ending on the right side, you're finishing it so it's right here and this will be facing up. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a few moments and then we'll carry on with the next rectangle. When I last left you then I was doing this and now I got pretty much a square. Now here's the secret. You can follow the pattern and says it does so many rows or measure exactly but if you're satisfied with it you can stop at any point as long as you're finishing on the right side. So remember how we listed this is the right side, this is the last row here and now I'm gonna finish off. So what I wanna do is just trim my yarn here and of course I'm doing a miniature example than what you see in the pattern. So take this yarn here and do, just deal with it right now, get it out of your way and just put it into a darning needle and get it woven in so that you never have to worry about that again. So to do that, if you go in underneath the stitches, just stay within the top section here, go at about an inch or so and just go across. Don't interfere with the top, just go right kind of underneath and just going in and make sure that when you go to pull it, you don't like warp it in any way, you kind of keep it so it looks the same and then coming back in the other direction, second time and then finally back in the other direction is that you want to go third time across. So third time is a charm kind of idea. So once you have that done then three times, you can safely then cut out your, your strand there and you're good to go. And I want you to do that every time we're gonna do a new color. So when you finish that, that's exactly, so I won't show you that again. So here's where we are right now and I'm gonna take this uh, starting strand. I might as well get that out of the way as well and put that into a darning needle and that you did. Now what I don't wanna take out is this right side up stitch marker here. So again, just like I, I showed you before, I want to just going in, just gliding it in back and forth three times. Now if it's not long enough, just do your best. If you didn't leave a long enough strand, just to hide it in. So I might just go twice on there. I'm gonna trap it in anyway. Okay, so there you go and let's move on to the next rectangle and the re next rectangle is then going to grow then next to this on the, on the base. So we're not gonna turn it, we're just gonna keep it going back and forth but adding another color right down there. So back on the pattern, I figured out when I was reading the instructions is that when we started the started chain, we started here and then we worked our way up. So when I went to finish this project or this section here, this is where I am that I finished, this is where I started. So what I figured out is that when we do the, the next rectangle here is that we have to turn our project like this. Okay, so you're still looking at the right side and now we're gonna pick it up right here. Okay, so we don't pick it up here, we pick it up right here. That's why it's important to mark that. So let's begin our next rectangle which is the first rectangle which is the second part. So let's get our next yarn ready. I'm just gonna create a slip knot and I'm just going to leave a little bit of extra so I can put it through a darning needle at the end. So this one here, what we have to do is that this is where we started. This is the original chain and we're gonna pick it up on the corner. So let's just insert into the corner here and let's wrap that yarn leading to the yarn ball through so it's attached. We're gonna chain one and we're going to single crochet into the same one. So we're gonna maintain the pattern as we see. So here's what we're looking at here is that when we go to do this, we're gonna chain one, okay? We skip the next chain and go to the second one over. And what I want you to do when you go to do that is just kinda get underneath the stitches a little bit. So let me just zoom in and show you exactly where I'm gonna push in. 
So here's a zoomed in shot. So when I go to chain one, skip one, I'm into the base of this one right here. So I'm not gonna go into this one strand by itself because it's gonna pull it open. So what I want to do is that I want to go in between here. This is just my own personal suggestion. You can do whatever you want. Okay, and I went in between right there. So chain one, okay, and go to the next one and just go right in between. Do you see that? And just push it in and get it and then you'll have a nice solid join when you go to do that. Okay, and see how I'm bearing that as I go. So chain one, okay, skip one which is this chain and then just bury it right in between. So do that all the way across your panel. So your stitch counts will stay in balance. So chain one and then just single crochet into the final. Okay, so this is a really good thing. Okay, so you can see that it's gotten uh, nice. So if you see it ruffling in any way, you notice that you will have too many stitches in here. So let's turn our work. So we're just gonna repeat exactly what we already know of doing the repeating rows. So that row that we just did was like repeating of row number three and now we're gonna go back to row number two. So we chain up two or sorry, chain up one, single crochet into the first one and look for that space, a gap again and that's the one you fill in the first time and then chain one and then start going into the gap spaces across. So chain one and do that. So this is um, like row number two all over again. So you're gonna continue to repeat the rows number two and three over and over and over until you get to the length that you want for this uh, uh, rectangle. It does give you the information on the pattern if you would like to follow that. So as I buried it you can see that it's here. So what I wanna do is I wanna next time I go in is that I want to bury that in. So chain one. So going in I wanna capture that one that I buried so that it's stuck underneath so it pulls it up into the stitch. So chain one and go to the next one. See how it's just sitting out there. So just going in just pushing it up and let it be part of that original one. Therefore it doesn't stay out of control and uh, it doesn't uh, impact the look at any way. So what I can just do for this one here that's hanging out is that I can just trim it down and then you'll barely even see when this is even being joined. Okay, so chain one and then your final chain one space here. Okay, and then the next one is a single crochet. So you just finish, finish that in. So that was like row number two. So turning your work then you're going to back to row number three. Guess what? You're on the right side again. It's so important to pay attention to that. So chain one, single crochet, chain one. So you're skipping that first single crochet going right into that first chain one space. So you're gonna do this over and over and over and it says ending on the right side. So guess what that means? That you can go as long as you wanna go uh, for this particular idea as long as you finish on the right side which is the side that I'm looking at right now and I can tell by the stitch marker that it, that's true. So it's a really kind of an easy way to uh, be able to maintain it. Again that stitch marker makes the huge difference in your life for this particular project. So this is uh, like row number three. So chain one, skip the next single crochet and go to the final. So I want you to go as much as you wanna go or for follow the pattern and make sure that you end so that you're looking at it like this. This is the right side and you end right here. I'll see you back here in just a few moments because this one of the, the panels is not a very big um, section of a rectangle. So I'm now done this rectangle here and again I'm just kind of doing a miniature model. So I'm gonna fasten off and then I'm gonna use my needle and I'm gonna hide in those ends. Again looking, see this is the right side so I want it to finish so I was over here. So look for that and then that finishes off the first rectangle. So let's fasten this off and I'll see you back here and we'll do the next rectangle together. So at this point I've now done the beginning square and now I've done the first rectangle. So you can see now it's a big rectangle like this. Now we're gonna move over to this one here. So how do I know that? Because this one here requires this to already be here before you start there. So now I'm gonna move over. So let's look at our project and we wanna start with the right side of the project and so this is what we're looking at here. Okay, this is the right side based on what I had you label. So what we want to do then is for the second uh, one is that when we finished, okay, we were right here and it says turn 90 degrees counterclockwise. Watch. Boom. There we go. So we're gonna start right here. Okay, and then we're gonna work our way across for doing the second triangle. So let's begin again and we're gonna create a slip knot. So now that you've done with single crochets, single crochet is basically here the rows you can, they will all work out with the, within each other. So let's uh, and join with the slip stitch to the first uh, corner right here. 
Okay, so we're just on the side. So we're gonna be working with the sides of the rows um, as we go across. So let's just join it here and fasten on like that. And we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do a single crochet into the same one that you just did the join in just like that. So now you're gonna maintain exactly the same pattern. So we're gonna chain up one Okay, so we skip one row and go to the second row over and once you start this it actually will make a lot of sense to you. So do you see where it's kind of bunched up like this and then it's gapping and then it's bunched? Look for the ones that are bunched. Okay, so it's the second one over anyway. So one and two and I want you to single crochet followed by a chain one. Again there's the space which is the next one. There's the bunched up one. So there's two single crochets in a row. It looks bunched up to me. That's why I'm calling it that and you just wanna play within the sides of those rows. So chain up one and looking for the bunched that you have. So the trick is when you're doing this don't add any extra um, stitches that will create this to have a ruffle within your work. So you want it to be nice and flowing as you go all the way across. So there's the gap and then here's the bunch right here. So just have to watch those as you're going all the way across and make sure you don't get any extra plies like I just did. Um, especially when they are joining together you just don't want anything uh, to be uh, very clearly obvious that it's not in the right place. So chain one here's the next bunch right here. So just watch where they're joining. That's Those are probably where they'll throw the off and you might actually throw in an extra stitch there. So just going all the way across just like so and you're just establishing this new color and then guess what you're gonna do again? You're just gonna repeat those rows again. So this is like repeating row number three right now and so we're gonna go back to row number two and then three and two and three and guess what? When you finish this one you finish off on the right side which is the side that we're looking at right now. So it, this will take you right to the end. See? See how that all worked out? Okay, so do you see that there's no ruffling at all? It's still nice and flat. So when you go to turn your work you're now like you're back on row number two again. So chain up one single crochet in the first one, the next one is chain one space. So fill it in with a single, chain one and then just jump to the next gap, chain one and the gap. So because the other side this is where you've started your your yarn again, you'll have the same situation of you buried in that first part of the yarn. Just be very conscientious of that and make sure that you get it and I'll be there in just a moment just to show you as I did it. And again it's just a matter of just being a little bit uh, careful with your technique. So do you see here it's kind of uh, just laying down. So when I go into these next gapping spaces I wanna make sure that I get it and it goes all completely around. And it just helps you to hide in those loose ends without having to do a lot of extra work at the end. And you're just maintaining the pattern as you know it. Okay and then the next one is a single crochet. Okay so now you can safely cut that out. You buried it in kind of twice and now we're gonna carry on. So it's like row number three once again and you just chain up one, single into the first, chain up one and then jump over the first single crochet and go to the first gap. So when you're gonna do this now you're gonna continue to do this until you, um, you're satisfied or the length that isn't requested in the pattern. Again you're finishing off on the right side. So whenever I'm done I'm gonna finish off right here and I should be able to see this strand here to tell me that it is the right side. So I'll see you back here in just a moment and then we'll carry on and add our next rectangle from that point. So I've just finished this one here and again I'm finishing right here. This is the right side. I can see by the stitch marker that I'm on the right side and now I wanna finish off here. So I'm just gonna fasten that off using my darning needle and then we'll pick up and we'll do the next rectangle which is the third. So right now I have finished one, two and three and now I'm about to build this one here. So it's gonna build along the edge here and along the side of the edge here. So what I wanna do is that I wanna position this with the right side facing up just like you see here is that you can see that this is the right side. I wanna change it and I wanna go like this. Okay, so now I'm back on this edge over here and I'm gonna go all the way across and then onto this section right here. So remember everything just kind of, it just needs to be stretched, blocked and on once you're done and then that's why it's kind of looking a little bit loopy or wobbly right now. It's not because of the, the stitches, it's just because it just needs to be shaped. So let's uh, begin and we're gonna start right here and carry on with the third rectangle. Now the third rectangle is a little bit different from the rest of it. So what's gonna happen is that it, you'll see that it doesn't actually give instruction on how to put it in. It says maintain the pattern as you see it. So right now you have 
is that you single crochet, chain one, single crochet. This means that row number two is the next one because it's gonna be single crochet and single crochet is gonna fill in the first chain one and then it's gonna carry on as you go across. So we have to maintain the pattern as is. So we, let's attach our yarn to the first single crochet like this, chain one and single crochet into that same one. So we're gonna maintain the pattern as you see it. So keep this yarn down so you can bury it. So the next one is a chain one space so you're just gonna fill it in with a single crochet and then start your chain one and then jump to the next single uh, chain one space and so on. So you already know how to do this pattern. It's just a matter of doing it. So chain one and keep on going. So once you get to the other side you're gonna have your um, the side of the other rectangle that's gonna come into play. So we wanna go completely across that one as well. So that one we go into the sides of the, the project. So what you wanna do is maintain exactly the same look as you come across to that. So let's go into this one here. Okay, so chain one. Okay, so the next one is a single crochet. So go into the first chain one over here on the side. Chain one and keep going into these spaces that you see on the other side. Just make it look like it works. Just like, there you go. And then the last one right here. Okay, so it's not buckling at all. It looks like that it's flowing and that's what you want. So you wanna turn your work and carry on the pattern as you know it. So it's chain one, so this is like row number two. Single crochet in the first one. Fill the first space in with a single and then chain one and keep going into your gaps with singles. So you do that back and forth and guess what? You're gonna finish on the, the certain type of, um, it doesn't actually matter on this one actually now that I'm looking over. Um, it says finish on the right side. So you can uh, just finish off. So when you're looking at this, again, you are looking for the right side. So right now I'm on the back side of it and I can only know that if, if I have it marked just like that. So I'm just gonna go back and forth as long as I want to. You can follow the suggestion in the pattern and uh, it just really is really quite easy. So here's where I buried that first yarn. So when I go into the next one, I wanna just capture that one and the one that I want to go into to bury it completely and get it really stuck in those stitches so that you never see it. Just like you see and then single crochet into the final. So again, turn your work. This is again the right side, I can tell and carry on. So chain one, single crochet, chain one, skip the first single crochet and go right into the chain one space and so on and doing that all the way across. So please do that and I will see you back here. Just follow the measurements on the pattern or just stop whenever you feel like it and make sure that you finish off on the right side of the project that you see here. Okay, I'm just finishing up this one. Again, I just, I'm just eyeing it up. I'm just making a miniature. It's all good. It's for Barbie. <laughs> and I'm gonna finish this off. I'm gonna weave in the ends and now we're just gonna finish off the final which is gonna be coming along this edge right here. So let me uh, just finish this off and I will see you back here in just a moment and we will turn our work once again and do the fourth and final rectangle. So here comes the final color. So here's what we're gonna do is create a slip knot and we need to turn our work once again for the final here. We're looking for the right side and we turn our work now and we're gonna start here. Okay and work our way across. So let's uh, begin on the side edge just like you see here and just gonna join it. So this one here we got a partial of a side of the stitch here and then we have the regular stitching that you see here. So we're just gonna have to make sure that we make it work as we go across. So make it work. So chain one and single crochet into the first one that you did the join with. So you already kinda know how to do this already. I'm just kinda going through the motion with you one last time. So we're going to then chain one and then you just look for it and make sure that you skip and you keep on maintaining the pattern exactly as you see it. So one, two and I'm gonna go there and chain one and so on. And so I'm bearing that edge in or that straggler in as I go. Okay, so I just keep on going and I'm pretty confident with this pattern. Once you get on and start doing this, it actually makes a lot of sense. So chain up one and now I wanna maintain the pattern as is and I'm just gonna continue along and onto this new section. So if it's ruffling at any point, you know that you've put in too many stitches and if it's starting to buckle, like it's starting to fold in on each other, then that means that there's too few stitches and so this is the time to do it. So if you think that it's buckling right now as you do it, it's not gonna get any better. So you either uh, just relook at the row that you just did, lay it down on the floor or bed 
and determine um, if it's right or not because once you go beyond this it's you have to frog it meaning to rib it out, rivet, rib rivet rib as you pull it out in order to correct it. So it's completely up to you. I kind of did a kind of project like this when I was a kid. It was terrible let me tell you. <laughs> I don't even have a picture of it. It was so bad. Um, I put my name into an afghan and it was like horrendous. So okay so there you go. See no buckling it looks great. So we turn our work and maintain the pattern as we know it. So chain up one and single crochet in and then the next one is a chain one space. So fill it in with a single and you already know how to do this. So yeah I did this kind of project. I actually made my wife and I when we were dating uh, that Mikey loves her name. Yeah, I won't say her name out of uh, privacy but uh, anyway so I did all the, the words and everything and then I went to go try to do and put this into an afghan kind of like what you're seeing right now and it was terrible. <laughs> she loved it but that's because she felt sorry for me. Um, but it was a, a kind of a cool idea but you learn right off the bat like if it starts buckling there's no way to fix it. So it was buckling as I joined it and it just got worse and worse and worse to the point where <laughs> you don't even see the love symbol in it. It was kind of a lot of fun. And uh, you know the things you do uh, because you have a crochet hook is kind of insane. <laughs> but uh, it's a great memory obviously I'm, I'm laughing about it because it's part of your history. It's part of the funness of creativity. So going right to the edge just as you know it and then single crochet right into the edge. So um, there you go. So I buried that in as I did it. I didn't say it this time because I was telling you my story. Hopefully you like my stories and turning our work again and you're just going to go back and forth now as, as you finish the final rectangle to make this work. And when you finish make sure you finish on the right side that you can see here and then that's it your project is completely done. So I will just do a few more rows and then I will finish off today's tutorial with you. So I'm finishing up and that's it. So you'll have a different size obviously afghan. I've got now one for Barbie and that's awesome. <laughs> And I actually have two of these now. I did a sample last night. I've never done anything like this before. Uh, so I did want to run a sample after hours in order to make sure that I understood this pattern. But it's actually not as hard as I thought. I think I've been ignoring these kind of patterns over the years because I'm scared of them. But I realized that if you're just keeping an eye on that right side versus the wrong side I think that you'll have success every time. Um, I wasn't technically kind of paying attention to it um, the first time I ran the sample but then I was screwing up. And I realized that if I I didn't realize how important it was. I guess that's the, the right way to say it. And so what I realized that it during uh, halfway through is like man I should have really paid attention to what the right side was so that I could have success. So this is uh, how you do these kind of ideas. This is called the modern log cabin crochet blanket and it's a really neat concept. It's about building on top of each other and if I pull out my other sample that I did the other night you can see that I have two. And let me just zoom out here and that's exactly. So it just has to be stretched and just kind of blocked in a way but everything kind of makes sense and it is a great time while you're doing it. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.